is Tracy McBride with T. McBee Image Consulting. Welcome to Retirepreneur, Tracy. Thanks for the invite. I'm very excited to be here. I'm so glad you could join us. And boy, our paths crossed years ago. Mm -hmm. Then we both kind of went in different directions and then they crossed again. We'll talk a little bit more about that and about your business, but I always like to start with everyone's career journey and mm -hmm. understanding what contributed to where they are now. So can you fill us in a little bit on your background and your <sighs> own? I'm taking a lot into a very little <coughs> nutshell here. Okay. But basically, I mean, I've always had the uh, the fashion, the style. I did home decorating. I did worked in retail stores as a you know a young teenager and beyond. I've been working since I was 16 years old. Uh, then you know, fast forward. You have babies, you have families. I went into uh, real estate. I was I still have my real estate license for the last twenty some years, and when everything started to you know plummet Tank. in '08, yep. I started to look around and go, what else do I want to do? I want to be where um, we're all valued, loved, and appreciated, right? And did a pros and cons. What am I good at? What do I love to do? What can I hire other people to do for me that I'm not great at? Because I can't be great at everything. None of us can. And that was started to be T. McBee PR company. Ah. But through that, one of the steps would be to refer people who I would be repping and helping market their books and whatnot. And there was no one to refer them to, to help them align their personal image with their brand. Interesting. Wow. And that's when I decided this is what I wanted to do. And I'm good at, you know, giving advice. I always have been. And at that point is when I started to work with different image consultants from around the country to learn and train and really hone in on the skills that I wanted and start my business. Wow, and what a smart thing to do. You know, innovators will often kind of bring two adjacent fields together to kind of build mm -hmm. a new value point. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I was able to do real estate, finish up my real estate, because I had listings and whatnot, and build this business because I was able to do both at the same time until I let one go and I did 100% this. So I was able to build it. Amazing. You know, and I mentioned to you before as we were getting started this morning, I was kind of a little concerned. I'm thinking, oh boy, Tracy's going to be there. What am I going to wear? <laughs> and we're never quite comfortable with those things. And it's always nice mm -hmm. to have an outside set of eyes. So let's talk a little bit about your, your image consulting business. And you've really got two categories. It's one-on-one -on -one, and then there's some group corporate. So tell mm -hmm. us more about that. Well, the one-on-one -on -one are services when I actually come into somebody's closet. And I actually work with their body, help them with their body shape ID, help them with their personal um, palette of colors so that then we're now able to detox the closet, go through everything. What is working? What isn't working? What do we want to keep and build on? And what are we saying, let go, this isn't helping me? And if we know three pieces of information, and every, every detox will be successful. If you know your, your words, your style words, I call them. Basically, it's where you want to go, and how do you want people to see you? Two, your best colors, and three, your body proportions. So I call it body shape ID. So I help people because most women are, and men, but mostly women are dressing their bodies quite not right, not the right proportions, too long, too short, too tight, too whatever. And I help them with that. And when I have those three pieces of information, detoxing the closet is so much easier. And if you leave people to do it on their own, and they can, they get distracted, they don't give it the time it needs, they start, they stop, and it never gets done and not with an eye. So I'm standing right with them doing that. Wow. And, and I would think that it's sometimes, just like with even a personal trainer, it's, it's, it's easy to fall back into some of those mm -hmm. defaults or those mm -hmm. comfort zones. So yes. are you kind of helping them right. along the way? Helping them along the way. I also, originally, the first, my first book I wrote was a leave behind to them to keep on track to everything I've taught them. Because you know what's creating new habits, right? Yep. You gotta create a new habit and make it your every day because it will save you time, energy, and money. But once I've done the detox, I don't just let them go off haphazardly shopping on their own because what do we do? We go revert back to our old habits right. and we go back and buy all the same stuff we just got rid of. Right. And then they can't remember, what did Tracy say? What, did, what should I do here? I shop for you. I fill the dressing room with the right pieces, parts. I know what you own. I know your body shape ID. I know your colors. I know where you want to go with right. your, your personal brand, your personal image. And then I shop, they show up to a dressing room filled with the things that are going to work. But 
they still have to know how they feel. So every item, even if it looks fabulous, if they're not feeling it, we leave it behind. We do not take anything home that doesn't make them feel good. We need to bring, enjoy our clothes, and, they, and I'm looking at the fit and all the little details. Then I come back, so this is the third service, I come back and we create what I call the master the look. And we take everything that we kept, everything we bought, and I create every mix and match. Wow. And take photos of it and put it in a digital virtual lookbook. You look at the book, you go, I'm wearing that today. No more thinking about what you need to wear. And that's got to be a time saver right there. Absolutely. You know, when people think about this stuff as it's costly, I, you know, I can't, <coughs> excuse me, I can't afford to start investing in new wardrobe, but this mix and match piece is really important. Mm -hmm. Now, my thing, and my mom will call it out, she's like, you're wearing black again. Mm -hmm. And I am, and look at me, I'm wearing mm -hmm. black again. Mm -hmm. um, but I know I travel a lot, and it's just black mm -hmm. is black, and it's just the one neutral that I can kind of flip around. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? Well, everybody needs to find what their neutral is. So if you are in the cool family, your cool undertone skin, like I am, so I have a lot of pink rosacea and pink in my skin. And what I concentrate on navies, I can wear blacks and grays. I find that black drains my energy and it will drain others' energy as well. And when I do wear it, it's usually always with other with color, bright okay. color, like a cobalt blue yep. or a hot pink or a color that I love. Today I'm wearing teal and purple, all right? So it's all about finding your palette and you'll find that everything mixes and matches easier. So for my clients, because I've done their mix and their match for them and they have photos of them in their clothes, which is very powerful. It's not a mannequin right? It's them in their clothes. And they see how they fit on their particular body and they're able to pack from that too because now they have a palette and they go, oh, all, this, all these colors mix and match. And many times people think they can only do certain colors with, cer with other colors and they don't explore. So sometimes it's the scarf can be that magic item. They go, well, I never would have put purple and teal together, like in two different separate garments. Yeah. But when I brought the scarf in, they go, oh, that marries it all. Interesting. So it's about helping people see how that works. Like when you decorate a room of your home, they say start with the carpet. Okay. Right? The print. The, and yeah. then pull out the least obvious color into the accessories in the room. It's kind of like that with your wardrobe. Interesting. Wow. We need a, maybe, maybe it's time for a spring uh, wardrobe update Absolutely. for me, okay? So stay tuned. We might give you that, uh, that update. You know, I mentioned there's the one-on-one, -on -one, which it, we've kind of touched on. So how does this move into the group or corporate space? How, how does your involvement work there? Well, I've had organizations hire me sometimes to work with key employees. They say, Tracy, this person has the, all the skills and the education and all the things that we need them to know in order to do this next promotion we want to give them. But their image is a little rough. So they'll hire me to work with that one-on-one, -on -one, doing my one-on-one -on -one steps with that individual. Um, other times they have me come in and maybe they're having an issue and typically in the summer I get the calls. Oh, people are getting too casual, showing too much skin. It's 90 degrees out but we can't have them dressed like that in our professional office. It's affecting their brand because people pay a lot of money, big corporations, right. to elevate their brand and then your employees might be diminishing it. Um, so I will come in and talk up to a group and then if they want me to, I, to talk to individuals, I can. So it depends on what they need. It's a HR concern. They call me. We have conversation on how to deal with it so that nobody's being picked on or, or anything of that nature. But there, and there has to be rules and you have to manage it. And I help them do that. And I have gone into major companies and help them create um, focus groups where we take a sampling from different departments of people and we find out what they want. because. Things have shifted in our workforce. How they feel is important. So you can't just say, hey, everybody has to do this. Right. People don't like that anymore. That mm. has changed, okay? Don't shit on me. Exactly. So it's a focus group, and then we come to the, the management and the staff, and we, we come to a middle ground. This, per, this is what they want, this is what you want. What can we do to make everybody happier? Wow. So it's easier to show up. So, every day so it's a, it's a much bigger piece than the wardrobe the mm -hmm. wardrobe is kind of the catalyst for so right. much other, so many other things right. but, but it all trickles down to that 
So, okay, so in the your wardrobe. work, you must see some things. I'm thinking about, you know, the do's and don'ts. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the common mistakes we're making on, on this type of thing? And, and especially thinking about this audience, because we're moving into mm -hmm. an age zone. Once in a while, my husband will look and go, you know, that's a little young, you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. thanks, honey. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. But uh, what are some of the common do's and don'ts, especially as it applies to the age 50 plus zone? Yes, I have a, I have a list of them. Don't. Don't say you're too old for this, that, or the other, or I've been doing it this way forever, All right? As soon as you do that, you diminish. It's how, limiting. Exactly, absolutely. So just because you've been doing it for 30 years this way doesn't mean there's not another way you could shift to or a better way or another way to look at it, right? Don't wear your cheaters low on your nose like this. How aging is that? And yeah. then looking over them, uh -oh. right? Guilty. That is very aging, right? I immediately became 10 years older. Um, don't get pegged as a fuddy-duddy. How do you think people get pegged as a fuddy-duddy in the workforce? Not being up to, up to date. And right. Um, and also tell people, show people you're showing up dated. Meaning, you're, maybe you're a gentleman, an older gentleman, 50s, 60s, whatever, and you're wearing pleated pants and they're baggy and the break on your leg is, looks like a puddle, all right? We need to shift from that. You need to shift and, and kind of hone in and look at, there's a reason why things continue to change. It's about looking crisp, looking fresh. It's not about looking young, it's about being fresh, being relevant. Right? Interesting, and it isn't there a little friction in the generations because there's like even this ultra casual mm -hmm. of the younger generations. We might have come up with you know suits right. and formal attire, and right. this business and casual and, mm -hmm. is a little overwhelming. Like, and it's finding that middle ground, right? We don't want to show up in you know a Zuckerberg hoodie, right, and jeans. Right. No, um, and we don't want to need to show up in suits anymore. Major corporations, many of them don't. They maybe sometimes ask for a shirt and a tie, all right? Whether you wear a sport coat or something, so it doesn't have to be a matched suit, which is more formal. And it's about finding out what does the company ex want and expect, and then what are you comfortable with? And then finding that middle ground where you can show up how you need to, but you're authentically yourself. And that's where I think people get get stuck, especially younger generations might feel like they're being forced to be something that they're not. And that isn't what I don't believe the companies really want. And it's about understanding both sides and helping everybody come together in, in that way. Um, so if you are a fuddy-duddy though, let's go back to that, is that people will automatically assume that your skills are dated if you look dated, right? So if you show up dressed grumpy and stuck in your ways and this is the way I do it, people will go, oh yeah, their skills, you know. And they stop not... listening. They're not even open to right, the, right, the exactly. possibility. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, you, your PR background continues to marvel me and I see, I see you all over social channels and, and you're just a really masterful communicator and two books, okay? Um, really great guides and really part of your, I, I, mm -hmm. I wonder how publishing and even public speaking has helped to amplify your personal branding. Tell us more about that as a uh, solopreneur. Well, the, the book actually, there's two versions. You'll notice that says second edition. The first edition was just a leave behind as a tool that I, when I worked with a client, I would leave this with them so that it kind of reiterated everything that I've just taught them on a one-on-one -on -one workshop. And then it was, everybody was saying, well, can I get a copy? Well, if you, you're gonna be my client? And then it was like, I talked to my publisher and they said, let's amp up, because the conversation, the way I was speaking was if I'd already been there, like they right. were, we already had a conversation and I was just finishing it with the book. Then it was, let's write the book as if anybody in the world could pick it up and use the steps. So there's six steps. The six steps I do with every client is in that book. So if there's somebody who's a D, you know, do it yourselfer, this will help them make sense of the steps so they don't start at, you know, step three and wonder why they didn't get where they wanted. Start at step one and go through it. Then later, a year or so later, the second book came, and it's really not a book, it's a journal. Because what I find, and it's pretty, and I like to write in journals, and I like it to be attractive, so this way they're able to 
focus on how they're shifting and evolving because that's what we're doing. So if you're writing here and you're going, I felt really good when I dressed this way or in these colors or however, and, but when I did this, it didn't feel as good. So we start to see patterns in our behaviors so that we can shift and change. So it's journaling really about just you and not your whole life. You, how you feel in your clothes, how your body moves, um, things you like about your body, things you don't like about your body, what you're willing to change, what you're not willing to change. And it's really, my whole advice is to embrace your, your imperfections because I haven't met any perfect people yet. I don't no? know about you. No, no, oh no. So it's about figuring out, this is who I am. I'm gonna love myself at any size, any weight, whatever people's numbers they get hung up on. And just love yourself because you're constantly evolving and you never get it done. Because when you get it done, you're not here anymore. You know, and it just removes, this whole piece removes so many barriers and now you can get right to, to where you're, you're going. And now public speaking, and even more so, I'm noticing you more <clears throat> video. Um, talk to us about that. So I've been blessed to live in a community that offers uh, a TV station. I'm much able, like this. Yes, much like this. And I'm able to go in there and talk and teach. And something my sister has always said to me, and I didn't always listen because we don't always listen to our sisters, but she said, Tracy, you just need to talk. Just, just get on the video and talk. So I've done style bundles and how to do them. I bring things in, I show people how to do this. So a lot of the things that I do for one-on-one -on -one for a client, I'm doing more in mass. So I did style bundles. I just shot another one the other day. It'll be coming out next month. And that will be all about how to purchase a purse and the things that go into it. I just want everyone, men and women, but especially women, because they do spend more money than men uh, on wardrobing, is women to be more intentional with where they spend their money. So rather than have 10 purses that none of them are quite, eh, right. right? I pick another black one, right? Because that's what women, you know, I go into closets, that's what I see, lots of black shoes, lots of black purses, and how to get out of the mindset of, well, I buy it because it goes with everything, but I don't really like the way it sits on my shoulder. I don't like to wear it in the crook of my, there's so many little details. Right. And it's such a personal thing. And I like to talk about my experience with other people and myself, and then people will learn from that because we're all learning from each other and go out with some more information so that they don't just go, well, it was on sale or it was, they were practically giving it away. You don't need more stuff. Right. It's about having less that's more intentionally chosen so that you can build a wardrobe that represents you and moves you towards your goals and you save time, money, and energy. You know, I would imagine the 80-20 rule plays with a wardrobe, like in a closet. So I think about, you know, even my own closet that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm typically wearing 20% of the right. things all the time. Right. But because the other 80% are in there and clogging up the closet, I can't even right. see the right Right. And options. people want to get rid of it, but then they go, well, geez, I don't know. Maybe maybe this is the perfect thing. I might thing, lose and I those 10 pounds. Right. Right. Or right. Because many times it's multiple sizes that we right. have in our closet. So I come in and I really help people work through that by asking questions. I don't come in and grab all your clothes and throw them in the trash. That isn't the goal. It's about teaching and learning and understanding why I love this. Oh, I love the color. But you know, I never really liked the sleeve on that. Do we want to let it go? Let's, we can add that color in, but let's find that color that you like everything about it. So I help people create criteria for shopping and criteria for whether, does this work? Is this worthy? Is this intentional purchase? Or am I just adding to the clutter? We don't want to add to the clutter. Don't add to the clutter. I mean, no. that just clouds everything up. Right. You know, we could talk forever, um, and <laughs> I, trust me, we could do a whole other program, and I hope maybe we can mm -hmm. later this year, but I do want to ask, you know, you've had this incredible entrepreneurial journey, you've built this business. As you look back, you know, what tips might you give this audience as they're starting to launch? I would say you need to trust in yourself. Talk to people who you really value and respect and love you and get their opinions. It's not all because some people will see this and some people it's too hard, whatever that next journey, what that step is. Um, and then keep your circle really small. And from that point is you don't need to tell everybody you meet until you've really done it or started the steps and you are full on. But you got to believe in yourself. You need to accept the fact that you aren't perfect. Um, while I love to write, I love to write. I write for Boomer Magazine. I write, you know, my newsletter. I have my blog. I write, write, write. 
but guess, guess what? I'm not great at it. It's all the grammar. I think I slept through grammar in school. So now I hire someone, I write it, I know what I wanna say, and let somebody else clean it up for me. That's so smart. Right, you find out what you're good at, hone in on that, hire people to do the things you're not so great at. And that has always saved me, because that, otherwise you go, I would do this, but I can't because I'm not good at this. Just hire people. Right. Outsource. I mean, that's how the, mm -hmm. this whole thing is happening. That's how I, the VA industry has grown. I think writing overwhelms people too, and they've got great insights to mm -hmm. share. And sometimes I get stuck, and writing is my trade. And so when I get stuck, I'll take, I have a little app on my phone, and I'll just mm -hmm. walk and talk. And then mm -hmm. I'll listen, and it's like, oh, there it is. There's the story. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you have to just to kind of jumpstart that. You speak great, your book. Speak, speak your book. It. Just say it. Be you. And I think. I think writing style today is more conversational, first person. Absolutely, absolutely. So. But you got to know where those commas go. <laughs> yeah, commas are Otherwise, I Someone do get, like, I will get an email from somebody saying, oh, you I put know. the comma in the wrong place. It's ITS, and not like, IT apostrophe. <laughs> okay, so I do hope we can get you back at some point. Um, but in the meantime, folks are intrigued out there. They want to learn more. What should they do? I have a new YouTube channel called Indelible Impression with T. McBee, and that is where I have all the videos that are being housed, all of my wardrobe tips. So they're all under five minutes. There's one a week, every Wednesday, we'll see a new video. So sign up on that channel, like it, YouTube, you know, everybody knows YouTube. You can go to my website, they're there too, as well. So I'm everywhere, I try to be. But write me, let me know you're there. And by the way, uh, Boomer and Beyond, you're doing writing for them as yes. well. So you'll find some, yes. some great writing there. I want to make sure we've hit this correctly because one, I love both books. Um, thank you on that. Mastering Your Evolving Style, you'll find that on your website and Yes, and Amazon. it's on Amazon.com. And You Do You with Style, okay? That's the, more the journal piece. Mm -hmm. um, this has been fascinating. Your YouTube channel, T. McBee. Dot com, correct? Did yes, I get that? Yes, tmcbee.com. And we'll have all the contact information uh, at the end of the show. And thank you, Tracy. This has been really a fun conversation. We got to do it again. We will. <laughs> thank you.